In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My friends, as we enter into the great gift of the Holy Eucharist on this fourth Sunday of Lent, Laetare Sunday, we also have the courage to pause and call to mind our sin and beg for God's mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian, Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. And Jesse, as Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? And Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, making a splendid appearance. And the Lord said there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pasture he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus passed by, he saw a blind, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. And so he went, and washed, and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to, to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, No, it just looks like him. But he said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes open? And he replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? And he said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made the clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So when the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see, he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? And he said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said to them, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, 
they would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, the parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. And he replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I already told you, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. And the man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. And he said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see might see and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this. and They said to him, surely we are not also blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see. So your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. And as I said at the beginning of Mass, we are at the midpoint of our Lenten journey. We're celebrating the fourth Sunday of Lent. It's known as Laetare Sunday. Letari is Latin for rejoice. And in the midpoint of our Lenten journey, Letari Sunday, rejoicing, is an expression of the church's joy in anticipation of the resurrection of our Lord, that which we celebrate, without doubt, Easter Sunday. These readings today remind us that it is God who gives us proper vision in body as well as in soul, and it is God that instructs us that we should be constantly on guard against the spiritual blindness or the darkness of uncertainty. Again, we should be on guard against spiritual blindness and the darkness of uncertainty. Pretty relative theme given the current global pandemic. But my friends, to live as a Christian is to see it's to have a clear vision about God, about ourselves, and about others. It's our baptismal covenant to love God and to love neighbor. Our Lenten prayer, and maybe underscore our Lenten sacrifice, should serve to heal the darkened corners and the blind spots that exist so that we can look at one another, we can look at others, and see them as children of God, and love them as our own brothers and sisters, saved by the death and resurrection 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. But my friends, doesn't it seem that sometime God seems to move slowly, very slowly? Perhaps we've all found it hard to be patient with the timing of God in our lives. It's easy, I think, at times to think we know best, and if only we pray a little bit harder, we will force God's hand, and he will finally act doing what we pray for. But it's not the way God works. Scripture gives us a keen insight time and time again. God's insight and God's ways are different than ours. They are slow, they are steady, but yet they are perfect. Jesus refers time and time again to the law and the prophets that he came to fulfill the old and establish a new covenant. Not to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. My friends, that's our hope. That's our light. And it's sometimes dark and difficult world. So what does it teach us? this moment we're in now, I think patience. I think it teaches us surrender, trust, and hope. If we want to pray hard and pray well, I think we need to pray correctly. I have to remind myself of that. That the correct way is to pray continually that thy will be done. God's will be done and not my will. So as we continue this Lenten journey, we do rejoice because we surrender to him and we allow his holy will to guide us in all things, to be our light so that we can be light in the darkened world. St. John Henry Newman uh, lived in the 19th century He was an English theologian and poet. First, he was an Anglican priest, and he had a conversion. He became a Roman Catholic priest and a cardinal for the church. He was an important and controversial figure in the religious history of England in the 19th century. He was a professor at Oxford University, and as a young Anglican priest, he, along with other scholars, started the Oxford Movement. It was a movement to to kind of reform the church back closer to the the covenant, old and new, founded on Christ. Yet when he was 32 years old, his health deteriorated. It became bad. And so he had to take a break from his writings and his teachings, and he went to Europe to recuperate. Unfortunately, he contracted a a deadly fever. He wanted to return to England, but he was not allowed to. Transportation was not allowed. As he waited, his life became lonely and tedious. He was experiencing great physical and emotional despair. My friends, he was caught in darkness. And as he prayed, He penned, he penned a beautiful hymn asking God for light to be able to see. He wrote, lead kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on, keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see the distant scene. One step, enough for me. In his confusion and distress, Father Newman prayed to the God of light to lead him from darkness to light, from confusion to certainty, from sickness to health. God heard his prayer and led him home safely, and in 1845, he became a Roman Catholic priest, and later a cardinal of the church. What does it mean for us? 
My friends, if you doubt that your light matters, if you doubt that your light matters in the world in which we live, the community in which we live, take this little quiz. Take this quiz. Name the five wealthiest people in the world. Name the last five Heisman Trophy winners. Name the last five winners of the Miss America competition. Do you know all these answers? Probably not. Ask yourself some additional questions. Who fed and clothed you when you were helpless? What was the name of your first grade teacher? Who's the friend you would call on in an emergency or moment of need? You do know those answers. They are the salt and the light of the world. So my friends, we, we do rejoice because our hope is in the Lord. We do, do rejoice because the good shepherd who enlightens the darkened world never turns away. My friends, we do rejoice because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And together we profess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and of the life of the world to come. Amen. And we offer our prayer and our petition, standing in the light of our risen Lord. We pray for all God's people that we may recognize those moments of darkness and blindness and turn to Christ to be healed. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father and for our Bishop and all who catechize and evangelize. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our caregivers and those who seek healing from this pandemic and all disease. We pray for those affected, for the unemployed and underemployed, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as always for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and to consecrated life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And this mass is being prayed for Gerald Disrud and for his family. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering of our own parish, for our beloved dead, especially Dean Arthur Plon and John Turcott, and for the intentions in our parish book of intentions and those held in the silence, in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the grace to daily renounce Satan and all his works in empty show. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer.
And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and wine, he would come to share the divinity of Christ to humble himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Wash away my iniquity. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration as we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you indeed of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. 
and have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. What shall we return to the Lord for all that he has given us? pray a spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
And let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended.